Welcome to my gallery. This is the Patrick Nicholas Gallery. I have my own gallery. As a photographer, I find this very useful. For example, here you've got the work that I've done in this area in Orvieto, which is based on landscape photography. Whereas when I was in Bologna, I was a studio-based photographer. These pictures here, these black and white pictures, belong to my Metamorphosis series. And the metamorphosis is a woman who's turning into something else. It could be a tree. For example, this here is uh, a piece of sculpture done by a friend of mine, Giorgio Bevignani, who made this laurel tree to illustrate the idea of Daphne, which is the picture on the wall here, turning into a tree. Uh, the other ones are flowers, we have um, peonia, camellia, uh, we have also the more, or, how can I put it, These are, this is a chrysalis. This one here, she's turning into, which eventually of course she's going to turn into a butterfly. And this side we've got the landscape. And I've always been a landscape photographer and then when I came to this part of central Italy, I put the woman into the landscape. Um, so we have a woman who's basically representing Ophelia. She's under the water here. I have a woman in Roman ruins, which is based upon uh, the famous Leonardo uh, picture of the Vitruvian man. I have here a woman who's Lilith. She's in a, what the Greeks call a catonic place which is underground, she's hanging onto the root and this is really quite typical of my work. I find something which I think has a, has a connection with the past. It could be the art of the past, it could be the mythology of the past and I find in this ancient landscape that we have around here uh, a, a stimulus to making pictures of women in the landscape. My pictures have been published, of course they were published when I was a fashion photographer and sometimes some of my portraits have been uh, uh, published. This, for example, is uh, a very well-known Italian pop star uh, who I photographed some years ago. And also, I've been published in, uh, in magazines. This is the Sunday Times magazine. They took a number of my pictures. And uh, this was the beginning of something really great actually. In fact, Sunday Times syndicated the article and as a result it went all over the world. I mean this is what, this is in a, uh, a Portuguese magazine called Sabado. I was in the South China Morning Post, I was in Australia. Uh, the, the pictures went all over the place. And also as a result of that I got picked up by a television crew from Switzerland. They made a documentary about about me and my work, again, in the landscape. That, I think that's what interests people most, is, is the landscape picture, this idea of the, of the woman being essentially part of the landscape. Um, and it goes back to really our, our ancestors. Before we had the idea of a male Olympian god, there was this feeling that the Godhead was nature, and nature was a woman, and woman here is in and, and a part of nature. In, in fact, in this picture, picture, particular picture, the woman is almost camouflaged. I mean, she's, she's really difficult to spot. In fact, that's something I've been doing more of recently. Very often the woman is so small that uh, you have to kind of search her out. My pictures are prints. I don't, um, I don't do a picture just to have a digital thing on a screen. I do a picture and I print it on watercolour paper. And I never ever pay my models. So anybody who thinks they're, they're going to get paid for what they do, is, it's absolutely out of the question. What I do is I ask a woman who I think would be good in a certain picture to pose for me. And she signs the model release. And I give her a print. I mean, this is a, quite a big print, nearly 50 by 70. And I think that's something of a treasure because 
ultimately I made this woman into a work of art. This woman uh, was a bit cagey about, uh, as you can probably imagine, uh, posing in front of, what are they, ten real hoary old fishermen. Um, but in the end she loved it and we've been friends ever since. This picture was taken uh, ten years ago. Um, I'm not saying that exactly my fame has spread, but I do get people uh, seeing my website, they get in touch with me. I had a woman, uh, this one here, for example, Ophelia. She was an American who saw an article about me in an Australian magazine when she was serving in, in, in the Navy out there. She got in touch with me and she said, look, I'd really like to be in one of your landscape pictures. And I said, well, I'm not going to Australia. And she said, well, I'm not actually in Australia. I'm in Hawaii, but I'm, I'm not going there. If you want to come here, uh, it'll be a pleasure. And so she came here and we went out in the landscape and this is the one that I did of her. These women come from all over. Initially, of course, they were mainly Italians because I was living in Italy, but we have a, a Czech woman here. She's Australian. I have a, a, a Finnish doctor over, the, over at the end there. Uh, another American here. Um, I think the idea of being photographed in the landscape and being part of the landscape is a very, is a very winning formula. This is a woman, it took me something like six or seven years before we actually got around to taking the picture. And then it's really a case of you set a day and you do it. It's quite rare that I have a an opportunity to do, uh, go back on another day because the weather isn't right. So we set a date and the weather was appalling. But she absolutely insisted that she wanted to be by the sea because she loves the sea. So we got to the beach and it was just absolutely impossible. It was a gale blowing. And I took a picture anyway on a tripod to see what it looked like with the sea all sort of out of focus and, and moving. And then I said, well, why don't we go for it anyway? You know, let, let's have a go. And she said, you're joking. And she went down the mole, this ruined mole, uh, this jetty, and um, she couldn't hear a word that I was saying in my directions or anything like that. And so I just took about six, seven pictures while she was there, standing there looking out to sea. Then she turned around and came back, and she was absolutely covered in seaweed and sand and and she said Patrick you have no idea what you just put me through but she loved the picture and uh, it's now hanging on her the wall in her flat there's something there's a story behind every picture in fact one of the things that I do is I do what I call art and run evenings I go to a place it could be the top top room of a pub or it could be a restaurant or a cafe or something like that and I take along 10 pictures almost at random in a way that illustrate what I do maybe a couple of interiors a couple of black and whites and a few landscape pictures and I tell the story that there is behind every single picture um, it's the story of her why she did it why she came sometimes I I'll invite them along as well if they're in, in the area and they can then give their side of the story. If I can, I also invite my makeup artist along as well, because every picture tells a story. The book, The Belle. The Belle, actually, it's a bit of a double entendre in a way because it sounds French, Le Belle, but in fact, it, it's Belle means it's Italian for beautiful women. And I've assembled my uh, pictures taken over the years into. Um, I mean, you can't really call it a catalogue because a catalogue implies maybe a few notes alongside the picture. This actually is a book in, in its own right. It takes me longer to write the article than very often it takes me to take the picture. And I take about two to five pictures a year, I suppose. What I do is I go through the book, I try to keep it down to no more than 120 pages, so I start weeding a few pictures out and I say, okay, well that one's been in there a long time, maybe or I was never particularly fond of that one, let's go and put something else in. 
So I like to keep the book about 125 pages long, which means that this book has about, because there's sometimes more than one on one page, there are about 80 pictures in this book, which means that if each picture took, let's say, about a 60th of a second to take, my life's work is about a second, second and a half. This is acqua pendente, which in Italian means hanging water, which is actually the name of a town, but I thought it's a lovely name, the idea of hanging water. A lot of my pictures are water-based in the sense that they're taken in or near or even underwater, like, like this one here of Ophelia. Uh, and I assembled all the water pictures that I'd taken over the years and started putting them into, into one book. And again, you'll find that in a way, the woman is beginning to almost disappear into the, into the water, into the landscape. Uh, you kind of have to search her out a bit. This one, for example, is it, she's, she's in the cliff, but she's really become part of, of that cliff. Here, there are, there's a woman lying down on basalt rock, and she's practically the same colour as the basalt. In this woman uh, here, um, she's an opera singer. The, the title of the picture actually came from her because she, she suggested the title of Rosalka, which is an opera by Dvořák, and it's about a, uh, a water spirit. It, it's a bit like the Little Mermaid story. The, the water spirit who, if she leaves the water entirely, she becomes mortal. And so, in fact, she has to keep her feet in the water here. And then I had a long exposure, which made the water then go all sort of milky white and everything. I love this picture because, in fact, in a way, it's much more her than it is me. The suggestion of the, the subject came from her. It's her in the picture. It, it's actually one of my favourite pictures. This, I suppose, is a traditional size of picture, uh, sort of typical 10 by 8 of the old days, which, when people buy it, I suppose they, they frame it. it it's, a, it's a small conversation piece. But the wonderful thing about photography nowadays, over the last 10 or 15 years, we've got much bigger. When you had photography in the dark room, really there was a limit of about that sort of size, you know, uh, uh, I don't know 20 by... 20 by 30 inches was about your maximum that you could do. Nowadays, you can really blow things up really big and they make really good um, wall decoration and they very often make a series. You know, I might sell two or three pictures in a series. They don't need uh, framing under glass. What they are, they're mounted on a modern material which has only been out for a few years called debond, which is very tough, very um, inflexible, and makes a perfect backing that's also very light for photography. So you just need a simple frame to protect the edges. They're not heavy. And really, I don't think they're too expensive. You know, you've had two pictures like this, you, 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 could, you would be filling a room, really. And I can go up to uh, two metres long or two metres wide. Some people will write to me and say, I've got a new home, I've got a wall space, and I'd like one of your pictures. Which ones would you suggest? And I say, well, look, take a picture of your home, tell me what the distance is from floor to ceiling, and I will do a rendering of your uh, home with my picture or pictures inserted into it and then you can decide where you'd like to put it, which pictures that you'd like, whether you prefer it vertical or horizontal, etc, etc. I can even put you into one of my pictures. I'm not talking about photoshopping a face in, I'm talking about recreating the picture using similar materials, a similar place, going out into the landscape and doing something in the same place as I did one of my previous pictures or in a similar setup and it won't be a model, it'll be you. 
I think um, in the parody, there's obviously an element of humour involved. Especially when I started, I wanted to use pictures that were extremely well known. So this is uh, the Grand Odalisque by Angra. And this one is uh, Venus by Giorgione. And I in inserted a bicycle uh, instead of, I don't know, I can't remember what was there in the, in the original. But the landscape is very similar. I managed, managed to find a landscape in northern Italy that really, really did look like the original. So there is that element of parody, but I think the, the bicycle lends humour. And also I think this is a case of a picture that works better if it's small. This is really a conversation piece, and I, I don't really like it when it, 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 it's, it's bigger. Whereas this one, for example, which I call my Casaliska, which is not an odalisque, but a, she's a part housewife, part odalisque, um, that one really works well when it's big, I think, and I often sell a big version of my Odalisque, my Casaliska, uh, and she looks good on the wall. So uh, size is important, humour is important, parody is important, recognising the original sometimes is important and saying, ah, yes, that's, that's Venus, isn't it? That's Botticelli's Venus. But how come she's standing on a boat? And I say, too, that it's also the title is very important sometimes. The Botticelli Venus that I did, I struggled for a long time to come up with a title for it. And in the end, I thought, well, the boat should have a name. And so on the life belt, I put the name of the boat, which is Bernarda. And Bernarda is a female name, but in, especially in northern Italy, Bernarda is rather vulgar and actually means, I suppose... Fanny would be the, the equivalent in English. So it's, it's a boat called Fanny. This is recognisably an old master. But what I do, and what I really, really enjoy doing, is taking, paying attention to the details, which in a way you have to go and look for in, in, in some of these pictures, because apparently it's a pastiche of a, of a famous Angra painting. But it's more than that, because it's actually a comment of, of, on our own times in a way, because I've taken the, uh, the, the, the Odalisque, who's a concubine, and I've turned her into something of a housewife. So she's got um, a vacuum cleaner here, she's got some of her, her shopping down here, there's, a, there's the technology of the time, which is a, a Sony radio or, or, or whatever, and, a, and, a, and an old-fashioned phone, and also Actually, like Angra himself, who, who loved textiles, I had clients at the time, people like Etro, who had lovely um, uh, te textiles, which are then I used in my pictures. So you can almost, you can almost touch this stuff. There's no shortage of old masters. What I'm looking for are new muses, new landscapes, new models to take new pictures. Mm -hmm.